Hello, and welcome to the Beamdog stream for Baldur's Gate Siege or Dragon Spear, da -da -da. which yesterday we finally announced a release date for. Amber, would you like to fill everyone in on the details? I am so happy to actually be able to share details. I'm learning. Okay, so I've been at this job for about like five months now as the marketing and publishing coordinator. The number one rule I've learned is that everything takes way longer than you think it's going to take. I'm building in like, if I think something will come on the 1st, it'll probably come on the 14th. So I had been planning to share information uh, much earlier than this. Mm -hmm. And it's just been this waiting game of, can we tell now? Can we tell now? And now we can. So that's very exciting. Believe me, you don't want to know how the sausage gets made. <laughs> just be happy in your ignorance of how game development works. At the same time, it's a really great job and a really great company, so I love it. Mm -hmm. But yes, today we are talking about Siege of Dragon Spear uh, pre-orders, which went live yesterday on our website, www.siegeofdragonspear.com. And we've got a couple different options for people. You can pre-order the game if you have Baldur's Gate on Beamdog. If you don't, then it'll automatically add the game to your cart. Uh, if you've bought on a different store than beamdog.com, then it's best if you wait until the game becomes available on the store that you did mm -hmm. buy from, which in most cases will be March 31st. If you did buy Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition on Steam, you can still buy Siege of Dragon Spear on Beamdog, but you'll need to request a Steam key, which we can help you out with. Indeed. And we also have a collector's edition. This is very big news. This is the big news. Yes. This is this is it. So we haven't leaked anything about the collector's edition, except Trent made some like cryptic uh, tweets, I think. And other than that, we're extremely pleased and proud to be able to announce that we're doing mm -hmm. a physical box set. It's going to be a collector's edition. You should see it up on your screen right now. I really want to uh, do some kind of a setup where we're like, what's that like home shopping network? you know, kind of thing. And we're like talking to people on the phone and having the physical thing mm -hmm. that we can model, mm -hmm. but we don't have that right now. So instead we'll In just show future, you pictures. One yeah, one day. And uh, we'll talk about each of the individual items as they go across your screen through the magic of technology. So uh, if you are an ancient of days like me, you probably remember the Baldur's Gate 2 Collector's Edition. And the Siege of Dragon Spear Collector's Edition is a total throwback to that because it's got this thick-ass spiral-bound manual that's really, really great. Um, you get a cool box. Yes. Uh, I believe it's made out of wood? I'm not sure what it's made of, but it has the full leather exterior okay. texture. And then it's got the Dragon Spear logo on the front cover. And then it pulls open and reveals all the little goodies that are packed inside in this kind of velvet-like interior setup. It's a box of treats. Box of treats, indeed. So something I'm very excited about is that we've got an official Siege of Dragon Spear tabletop dice set. Mm -hmm. The pattern uh, or the design on the dice was actually done in-house. So our own art team went ahead and used a template to create a Siege of Dragon Spear theme for each of the dice. Trent wanted to do a six dice set, and I said, no, no, Trent. We are going to go that extra mile and do a seven dice set, and that is what we did. So you get your standard tabletop set, D4, D6, D8, D10, D percentile, D12, and a D20. Mm -hmm. And a little collector's bag, too. Mm -hmm. Now, these dice will come in handy because uh, I think at the end of this month, there's a new issue of The Familiar that might have some character sheets that you'd like to Maybe. employ in your, uh, in your own game, perhaps. We'll see. We'll see. But More yeah, the familiar, the familiar that comes out at the end of the month, by the way, is all Siege of Dragon Spear content. So mm -hmm. if you don't have it yet, it's free on iOS and Android. Definitely check it out. And you can also read the familiar uh, on our website, thefamiliar.beamdog.com. Yeah. I was also really surprised by the response we got from people buying actual physical game discs. I thought people would be like, oh, well, I really want the goodies, but the game disc is kind of optional. Mm -hmm. Instead, on the forums, we've had a really big response of people yeah. being excited that people they're going to get a really physical this. game disc in the DVD case, a uh, two CD set of the Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, and Siege of Dragon Spear soundtracks. Mm -hmm. And uh, inside the front cover of the DVD case is a little card that's kind of a throwback to, you remember those uh, user interface cards you got? Oh yeah. Like a shortcuts yep. card and, and it you has- you put it right in front of your keyboard and it's mm -hmm. like F12, magic missile. Exactly. That's what, uh, that's that's what, what this card was inspired by. And uh, so yeah, and those, uh, all the content that you get on discs, 
you'll also get a digital copy of. Mm -hmm. The soundtracks are in MP3 and FLAC format. Yeah. Which I had never heard of, but apparently it's a really big thing. And the uh, the game that comes on uh, the DVD is DRM free, so you can take that sucker and install it anywhere. Um, we're very, very happy to be able to offer that. Um, another thing you're going to get with the collector's edition is this super awesome um, field report by one of the characters in Seed of Dragonspear named Bence Duncan. And on the field reports, this cool sort of faux leather booklet, and on it is this metallic coin that you can take out and try and pawn off to people at stores. Um, <laughs> it's really, really cool, though. We've, Actually, we've had, though, uh, I just happen to have one of the coins. One of the coins here that you can look at in, in your tiny, tiny screen. Mm -hmm. But like, look how mm -hmm. heavy it is. It's like really heavy. I can tell how heavy it is. Yeah. It's, it's very definitely heavy. solid metal. It's got the ball skull on one side. It's got the Dragon Spear medallion on the other side. This is definitely a substantial piece it of is. memorabilia. If, if you're you will a be big, happy to have. If you're a big Pog player, this is the slammer <laughs> that you want. You're not going to find this anywhere else but in the Collector's Edition. So yep, definitely nowhere get else. Your slam I'm, on. I'm just going to put this away right now since that's the only way you can get it is in the collector's edition. Or you edition. can rob us, but please don't. <laughs> uh, we had some questions already about the collector's edition. Do you have to pre-order it to get all these items or can you get them later? At the moment, you do have to pre-order the collector's edition. We don't have any plans or actual like ability to sell these collector's items individually. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to pre-order it. Although, um, the digital copies of the soundtrack and the game that you get when you order the collector's edition will drop on March 31st with the rest yeah, of the you're, orders. You're gonna get You'll have to wait a few months it. later for the actual physical product yeah. to ship. Um, we're estimating around June right now. And of course, we'll be sending out emails and stuff to pre-order people when the, uh, yeah. the factory is ready. We'll speed it up if we can, but production being what it is, it takes a long time to produce collector's editions. Um, so you get the awesome field report, which sort of details a lot of the stuff that's happening north of Baldur's Gate regarding this massive crusade that's running around and causing trouble. And that's a lot of fun. It's full of illustrations, and it's an in-universe book. And in addition to that, you get a sweet cloth map of the mm -hmm. Sword Coast from around Dragonspear down to uh, the Cloud Peaks, I believe. This is basically... Uh a replica or an inspired by the world map from Siege of Dragonspear. Mm -hmm. So you might not see some locations that you remember from Baldur's Gate 1 because this map is specific to the Dragonspear right, timeline yeah. or storyline. Um, somebody asked, will there be a retail version of Dragonspear, just the regular edition in stores? Um, we'd like to do that, but uh, we still don't have any plans regarding that yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Scott P480 asked, how limited is the collector's edition? So... Are we ready to say exactly how many? I don't think we're ready to say exactly we're how many. We're not going to say how many, but it is very limited, and we are selling them at what I feel is an astonishing rate. I don't really know a lot about the e economics of selling collector's editions, but I'm kind of bowled over by mm -hmm. the response to this thing. I had no idea people loved collector's editions this much. I'm very, very excited yeah. about how popular the, the CEs have been. Um, I don't think there's a chance we're going to sell it this weekend. So, you know, you can breathe easy if you you need to wait a few days, but don't wait too long. Yeah. <laughs> um, for anybody just joining us, again, the release date for Cedar Dragon Spear will be March 31st. Mm -hmm. So this month, it's coming up real, real quick. And that's for the uh, Windows Mac version on beamdog.com, yeah. Windows Mac and Linux on Steam on March 31st. And then our tablet versions will drop later as we're able to test and release them. Yeah. Um, and as well, uh, back to the collector's edition, you of course get this really thick, really cool spiral bound manual that's got a bunch of updated information about the games. Um, this teaches you everything from the base mechanics of D&D &D to specifically how to play Infinity Engine games. So it's a lot of fun. It's one of those mm -hmm. things that you sit on your toilet and read when you're not playing the game. So I would love this cover art so much. Uh, the direction we gave the art department was to evoke some of the old second edition um, D and D manual mm -hmm. covers that had yeah. like a big f cool fight scene with like a, an interesting monster. We didn't give any details beyond that. Just let their imaginations run wild. Um, I don't know if you heard this, Phil, but one of the art artists had a nightmare that our collector's edition couldn't go to sell because. Uh, our partners said that the Adventurer's Guide cover would look better with Kylo Ren on it from the new Star Wars movie. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, that's not wrong. But at the same time, probably. You know what? No, I agree. Let's, let's push this whole thing back. Let's re engineer this. <laughs> 
No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> no. Um, what else do you get, Alex? Next slide, please. No. You also get a pendant. It's a little metallic dragon head that you can hang around your neck. I don't believe we have a picture of it. But in the, uh, if you go back to the, um, the packet or the picture of the entire package, you can see everything in the box. This video will go up on YouTube after uh, we finish airing today. So uh, usually it takes us a couple days yeah. to just, we go through and make sure the audio is nice and everything like that. And then it'll go up on our YouTube channel. So if you so, want to go back and see any of these amazing elements for the collector's edition, you can. If you point your earballs to the screen there between the map and the manual, you can see a little shot of the cool pendant that mm. you get. And it's a, a dragon head in sort of a bronzy gold color. On a, um, on a fake leather strap. Yeah, and it's you can wear it around your neck or you could whip it around and hit people, one of the two. Oh yeah, you can see on the t-shirt that we will be giving away soon, it's this dragon head, but in metal and yeah. hanging on a pendant. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so we're in the middle of a robbery here and- uh, Robbery in progress. Hmm, perhaps we could work together. <laughs> oh, oh, ooh, <laughs> uh, what difficulty are we on? Because I have a really bad feeling about this. I'm not sure, actually. Well, we'll find out. Try pausing it and checking your difficulty. Whoa, what's that? Whoa. The new pause screen uh, grayscales by default. And again, this is something that you can toggle. But now when you pause, it looks a little bit like time stop, but the sprites are still colored. And you can see the, the highlights going on there. So. It makes it a lot easier to see the battle, which is what's really important when you're paused. You don't care so much about the scenery, you care about the position, what people are doing, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so Phil's gonna show you something really cool now. So pay attention if you wanna see something amazing. So uh, regarding the difficulty levels of the game, um, not only does it increase the uh, stats of the enemies that you face uh, and increases the damage that you take, it changes the composition of the enemies that you'll encounter. So on a lower difficulty setting, for example, if I were to go into the room I'm about to enter, I would probably encounter, you know, four skeletons and one tattered skeleton. But if I were to crank the difficulty up to say core rules, I would have three skeletons, two tattered skeletons, three skeleton archers, two armored skeletons and a shadowed soul. So the combat encounters become vastly more difficult and as well the tactics that you have to use to beat them change dramatically so on lower difficulty settings you can just plug up the entryway let your frontline melee fighters handle it and then pick them off from range but at higher difficulty levels the enemies will not only have different composition but they'll also use different strategies against you they're going to target your mages and clerics in the back they're going to go after the guys that are supporting the melee fighters lightly armored foes mm -hmm. as opposed to ones in heavy plate mail so on a lower difficulty setting an archer might just shoot whoever's in the front so if you've got like minsk and his big heavy plate armor he gets hit with an arrow big deal but on the higher levels uh, yeah. of difficulty, they may shoot all the way to the back where your mages are standing because... So here you can see this encounter, you know, four guy or five guys, fairly reasonable fight. We could probably beat these guys pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah, they're just, we're, they're we're just walking easy. after you. Yeah. yeah. They don't even care. They're just mindless. So we can just nuke these guys, no problem. Dead. Dead. Always with the murder. Dead. Always with the murder. Just quite. There, yeah, there that was a really murder if they're skeletons. It is. You can be murdered twice. <laughs> so that was easy. And I mean, obviously, that was very, very easy. Let's uh, load that save again, but we'll crank the difficulty way, way up. Insane. Let's give this a shot. I can't wait to see what happens. We've reached the cap. If you need some advice on dealing with undead. Done. I oh, bet we're going to win. BDH77, who said I have a nice voice. Oh, I see how it is. You didn't sing. You made me do it. That's true. Not like I mind. I, the the right. beam bard is not like a title that I take lightly. It will be done. Although it's not on my business cards. Uh oh. Uh oh. Whoa. Yeah, this is going to be a bit tougher. Okay, so we're going to plug up the entryway here. And we'll get Dinah here to throw in a... Uh, that's roughly where we want it. Safana is going to be in the back, picking the guys off with her range. And we will switch Khalid to... Uh, actually, who do I have in the front here? Yeah, these guys are fine. 
And uh, another thing here is not only do we have a different composition. So Phil mentioned, you know, we've got more archers, we've got these <laughs> big Minsky bladed stand. skeletons right. and so forth, but we've got the shattered spirits or shadowed spirits that can heal. So they're healing their own side while you're fighting them. And anyone who's played as much Warcraft as I have in Battlegrounds knows that healers are horrible and you should kill them first. Uh, and we've got skeletal mages here who can haste the group. So their tactics are changing, their resources are increasing, and you are in a lot of trouble. I'm going to die. So Phil, maybe there's something you can do to stop yourself from dying. I could quit and reload. You could pause it and reduce your difficulty level. But that's lame. So if you reduce your difficulty level mid-battle, it will actually take bad guys off the field. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's Boom. there they go. Boom. It does not work the other way. If you increase the difficulty level in a battle, you won't get multiple en enemies spawning. Yeah, you can. We, we had to make a bunch of decisions around that so that you can't farm XP in weird ways and that yeah. sort of thing. Speaking of XP, there's been a lot of questions. Uh, I think uh, somebody asked, but it's gone now, about how the XP cap works here. Are you going to play Dragon Spear and then enter Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition and find yourself at too high a level? Uh, no, so we've put in a lot of work into the XP cap. I think. I think it's, I uh, can't remember what it is, but you can get up to around level 10. I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm remembering from, from mm -hmm. months ago. But basically, the cap is slightly higher. And BG2 actually scales properly anyways. So if you start a Renicus' dungeon one or two levels higher than you would normally be, you're not actually going to notice that much of a gameplay difference because the game will react properly to that. Um, we've done a lot of testing, and it works out fine, honestly. Um, so it, it doesn't seem like it's an issue. For that all, was all zero, zero, Zim, zero, zero, who asked that. Thanks for participating in our chat. So that was an example of how battles can change. Now, that was just a very straightforward fight with a bunch of undead creatures. They're pretty dumb, you know, they don't do a lot of stuff. But you can see how later in the game, when you get into more complex scenarios with, you know, humanoid enemies that have a lot of abilities, that increased difficulty is going to be an absolute blast to play. There's so many small aspects to this increased difficulty system. Like the team has worked so hard on this and done so many great things. Um, humanoid enemies, for example, they will follow the rules of a PC. So you're not going to get fight an orc or something who has a humanoid monster class who can drink two potions at once or uh, something else that you as a player couldn't do. And mindless undead who have no intelligence score don't change their tactics. Why would they? They're mindless. So there's all these little tiny aspects to it that really makes the game reactive and is going to be kind of amazing. Also, Phil, can you show um, back in the options screen the no difficulty, no damage increase on difficulty? Right. Um, so I'll, I'll just describe it. But basically, you can crank the difficulty up to Insane or Legacy of Ball, which is the new extreme difficulty level. But you can disable the damage increases that monsters will, will have. So part of the way that the difficulty scales up is that monsters just do more damage, but it's not really based on their stats. So you can disable that so you get more monsters that are using more abilities, but they have the exact same damage output as you would. So mm -hmm. it's, it's fair, but if you want that extra challenge, you can turn on the additional damage. Like almost all of the options that we've created, it's toggleable, so yeah. you can change it on or off. Another really, really cool feature um, that's in Siege of Dragon Spear is the customizable um, AI scripts. So if you recall from the original games, you could give any of your companions a little AI script that they would follow, but it was pretty much just a paragraph of text that vaguely described what they did, and it was kind of monolithic, right? And we left them there for people who yeah, like if, them. If you, if you have... If you enjoy these scripts, you can still use them. But the new feature we have are, is the ability to individually control behaviors. So I have Safana here, and I can customize her AI so that she will attack enemies, but she prefers ranged weapons. She won't use items, but she will use special abilities, and so on and so on. So it's incredibly powerful, and you can customize characters in really, really cool ways. We're really, really happy about this. Going back to this map screen here... We were, as Amber was saying, we had a lot of debate about this, and there's still some work to go in, but the new map screen zooms out to show you where you, what you're looking at. And you can also toggle this little feature that shows you what the walkable area of the map is. So you can see up here in the corner, 
it fades off on the edge, so you know, okay, I haven't fully explored this map yet. And that's an issue that the Baldur's Gate games have always had, which is it's often very difficult to see where can I actually go, what part of the map is, is actually something important. Mm -hmm. And with the ground highlight, it makes it trivial, trivially, trivially easy to see. Um, P.S. Pia Silk says, uh, no, seriously, what have you done to character monster sprites? So, Phil, do you want to go over the optional character highlighting feature just one more time? Okay, so I'm going to, well, I can't really do it right now. But first off, if you look very, very closely when we're at max zoom, there's a bit of a black outline around the sprite. This is an option that you can enable or disable, but it makes it incredibly easy to pick out sprites from the background, regardless of what background they're on. Another thing that we've added as a toggle is the ability to mouse over sprites and you get a bit of a highlight. Now in combat, when you're all clumped together in a big mess, this makes it very easy to see who you're actually selecting. Um, another feature that we've demoed a long time ago are health bars at the top of characters. When you mouse over a character and you get the near death, badly injured, injured, that sort of thing, the health bars correspond to that. There are five states and there are five pips in the health bar. So this is all information that the player actually already had available to them in the original game, but now we've just exposed it in an easier to see way. Mm -hmm. And again, this is something you can toggle. If you want the classic Baldur's Gate experience where it was very difficult you can have it. Is the SOD expansion or patches going to update anything in Black Pits 1 or 2? Yes, so because Black Pits 1 and 2 are both just part of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, all of the UI and feature enhancements will go into the Black Pits. So we're not making any content changes, but all of the things like sprite highlighting and AI scripts and all that stuff will be available to you in the Black Pits. Well, these features also come to the iOS version for BG, BG2 and Icewind Yep, they sure will. BG and BG2. Yeah. And Icewind Dale? Yep. Well, the, the, the long-term plan is all of the great features that we're adding to Siege will eventually make their way to all of the Infinity Engine games. So if there's a, a, a feature that makes sense to be an iPad, then yeah, we would eventually patch that in. So the, the functionality of the engine, that's free, basically. If you own any of the Infinity Engine games, we want you to have the latest and greatest Infinity Engine experience. Mm. Thanks, E.D. E yeah. Yankee, for that question. The only thing we're really selling is content. That's what we care about. So even the Shaman class, which is new to Sea to Dragon Spear, will be added to BGE and BG2, because how could you carry your Shaman over from Siege if the Shaman weren't in BG2? To play this, I need to own Baldur's Gate 1 Enhanced Edition in the first place. Yes, that is true. Yeah. This is an expansion to Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. So an old school expansion pack, you get the base game, and then you get Siege on top of it. Although, that. just like Throne of Ball, once it's installed, you can choose to start a new game from the Siege of Dragon Spear position. Yeah. yeah, you can, there's a lot of ways to get into Siege of Dragon Spear. You can either start a new character at the beginning of Siege of Dragon Spear. You can import a single character from Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition or any other compatible game. Or you can import your save from Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. When you beat the game, it generates a save, and you can take that one and import it into SOD. And then your whole party from that game will be carried over. Uh, or you can import a save from earlier in the game. It doesn't have to be a save from the end of BGE. Or you can make a tabletop game and use your new Dragon Sphere Collector's Edition dice. Booyah! Then you can do whatever you want. There you go. Phil, here's a question for you. EAD Yankee again asked, what was it like working with Jim Cummings? He is hilarious. He is super, super funny. I didn't get to um, go. I'm not going to tell the whole story about why, but because of him, we're probably going to be sued by Disney. <laughs> um <laughs> But it, it was a complete blast. So when, when we got into the booth, he was like, oh, do I, uh, Minsk? I'm not sure if I remember this guy. And so we played him some, some of the original source material. And inside of about like two minutes, he was back into the groove of things. And he was cracking jokes to himself and taboo, completely unbidden. So th this guy is incredibly good at, at getting into character, staying in character, and ad-libbing. If I could only work with Jim Cummings for the rest of my life, I would seriously consider it. Although after working with E.K. Amati yesterday, maybe that's the wrong choice. All, uh, all the guys were a lot of fun. Yeah, it's true. We had a really great experience with our voice actors. Moten Ranger said, what are your future plans for Infinity Engine games? So we've always had a policy of not talking about what we've got in development. Just because sometimes projects get cancelled for internal or external reasons. And also... We just want to control the information that goes out once we started working on yeah. uh, different games. So I can't really comment on that right now, but we're very happy with 
what we did with Seized of Dragonspear. We're looking forward to its release on the 31st. And we hope to continue to bring you more excellent, amazing games. Speaking in more general terms, so Amber's right in that we're not going to discuss any future game projects that we might have. But in general, our plan for the Infinity Engine is to make sure that every single game has a consistent feature set where it makes sense. So if Baldur's Gate has, has something and it makes sense for it to be an Icewind Dale, it should be an Icewind Dale. And our, our overall goal is to leave the Infinity Engine games in an excellent state before we move on to do something else in the future. So if we ever were to move on to a new engine, we would be leaving the Infinity Engine in a very, very excellent condition that you'd be able to enjoy for the next 20 years. Thanks for clearing Going that up, though. Uh, That's nice. Makes us feel like, you know, we're really taking care of this this game system. I mean, we're still patching a game that's 20 years old. So. <laughs> that's true. How many companies can say that? When was the last time you saw a new I patch for Quake 1? As well, we're probably going to be doing a stream of uh, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition because we have an upcoming patch, the one that's going to enable achievements. And in that patch, a lot of the features of Sea to Dragon Spear are going to be released. So before Siege is out, you will have an updated version of BGE that has a bunch of these features. So Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Go. All right. Um, somebody requested last time that we mentioned the Baldur's Gate subreddit, which is actually fairly popular. Oh, so yeah, that is. It's really good. If you go to r slash Baldur's Gate, there is a very active community of Baldur's Gate fans, and they have a lot of fun discussions about builds and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, beyond that, there are, of course, the traditional Baldur's Gate community sites. You can do a Google search, look for Gibberlings 3, that sort of thing. Um, huge communities. These guys have been playing the game for, for 20 years now. They know it inside and out. They've modded stuff to hell and back. They love the game. We love them. Um, so if you love Baldur's Gate and you want to keep it alive, join these communities. They're still very active. There's a lot of stuff going on. And after the release of Siege of Dragon Spear, it's only going to get bigger. So this is the perfect time to get involved with the Baldur's Gate community. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate you joining us. We really appreciate all the support that you've shown us. Yeah. And yeah, thanks for being part of our, our stream today. We'll keep uh, future stream dates posted on the Beam blog and on Facebook and Twitter. Yep. And uh, check us out on the forums. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for joining.